Hey everybody, it's Larry Berman here, coming to you live from Taranya, and I guess it's Taranga if you look at it, Taranya, if you're from Toronto, you say Taranya, uh, if you're a local. Anyways, this is the mid, North Island of New Zealand, kind of middle, uh, North Shore, um, I guess uh, we're south east of Auckland. Next few days we'll be making our way back to Auckland for our final trip back to Tarana. Um, anyways, uh, you know, looking at the markets this week um, on vacation, I had my little ear pod in here. I was listening to the Powell press conference the other day and it, it's, it's amazing to me and confusing how um, I guess benign Powell is to the inflationary uh, risks here. And the, he talks about it and he gives it a lot of lift service, but I'm not sure at all that the, the Fed really, you know, I think they believe they've, they've got their soft landing and the markets obviously believe that too. I think the longer it takes to really slow this thing down and, and cool uh, wage pressures, the, the harder the landing is going to be. But Again, trying to time it has been an extremely frustrating thing. So, you know, when when you start to look under the hood and you look at and hear what some of the companies are saying, again, you get very, very different messages. Anyways, let's dive into the chart room, look at some charts this week and see if we actually learned anything. One of my uh, favorite clothing lines is Lululemon. It's uh, been a short in, in our portfolio for a number of months now we actually covered the short um, following this earnings uh, downside earnings surprise um, so that's a good it was a good trade ultimately uh, where where would I want to own this thing you know when you look at valuation and you look at the risk to the high-end retail um, line you, you've got to think about this you know 350 300 250 as a range where it gets interesting again, i.e. The, the lows of the last couple of years. So um, wouldn't touch it until we get into that range from a an oversold perspective. When you blow up the chart here a little bit, you, you really see the concern we had months ago when we were up against the uh, sort of post-COVID euphoria highs. And so ultimately it went way through that um, and now obviously in, in, in correction mode, uh, seemed to be some dip buying coming in uh, off the initial uh, sort of weakness today. You can see that by the candlestick formation there. But again, 350, 300, 250 from a valuation perspective makes more sense. You know, up here, the stock is trading for a retail stock at 35 times earnings, and that is a retail stock price for perfection. These guys, in my mind, are no longer in major growth mode, and they, they talked about pretty significant slowdowns in terms of uh, foot traffic and, and everything in the last couple of months. So sit up and, and you know be aware here, and this stock probably has more to go. Say, so Larry, why did you cover your short? Really, it's just a risk management thing for us um, and nothing more. I, I wouldn't be looking to step into the name. Another big retailer stock, which is a favorite of mine in terms of work from home clothing um, is, is Nike and, you know, loose fitting kind of stretchy. Um, you know, they talked about some challenges, too. We, we know there's some challenges as it pertains to a lot of companies exposure to, to China and Chinese um, retail demand. When you look at this stock, it, it caught um, one notable downgrade um, on the 22nd, but generally speaking, uh, analysts have, have tweaked their numbers down a little bit based on uh, what Nike has to say. I guess a little bit of more of that is probably coming. When you look at um, the stock from a risk return perspective and you go back five years and you look at where the lows were post COVID, you see $60. Well, what's going to get this stock back to $60? Uh, 
um, is is really a harder landing for the global consumer. And right now, that's not in the play. So buying this stock, you know, somewhere below 90, let's say, is still where I'm looking at doing it right now. It's not a cheap stock. Again, when it was 120, 140 um, and, and higher back a couple of years ago, hated it from a valuation perspective. It's now starting to get interesting again, but by no means is it cheap. When we look at, you know, cheap retailer and VF Corp, VF Corp and some of the challenges that, that they've had, you, you can see here, you know, from a stock perspective, going back a number of years. Now, this stock's, you know, never exceeded the pre-COVID highs and now is really low. And so if you're looking at a value retail name, this see, this is a name in our portfolio right now. Do I like the price performance in the recent months? No, I don't at all. Um, do I think that if there's a hard landing here, this stock has a lot of bad news priced in already? You bet I do. And so again, this is a name that I'm interested in right now on the retail side, as opposed to a Nike or a Lululemon that is again, still very, very richly valued. Um, and and so moving along into names we heard from uh, FedEx, a big buyback, a lot of efficiencies being built into the system and their modeling. I love FedEx down here. I thought it was tremendous value. Um, you know, stocks moving up, analysts chase their targets up. It's it's pretty standard stuff. They report today. What do analysts do? They put their price target up. Um, you know, price action today to me looks like the guys who the value guys were were selling into it, and I'd be inclined to want to do that here. FedEx is not an expensive stock, um, trading at a mid-teen multiple, so I like it. I certainly like it on on buying dips, um, but do I like it as a as a growth trade right now? No, I, I don't, and I wouldn't be sort of chasing it to the upside here. Uh, if it dips back below 250 again, I think you got to take a look at it. We had been writing puts for a number of months. Unfortunately, we didn't get put on anything. We were a little bit more conservative on our downside writing, but we've taken in a lot of premium on the name. And so again, when, when you look at the consumer related stuff and FedEx that takes those products to market, Again, you're seeing bifurcation, and that that's rampant everywhere in the market when we, when we look at it. Here's a name that hit my radar this week. Um, I've talked about the medical marijuana and the value play there going forward long term. MSOS is an ETF that I like to play that. Um, so is this move now in uh, canopy growth? you know, gonna gonna stick. Uh, when you look at uh, Seeking Alpha and some of the other uh, sort of blogs that talk about this stuff, uh, all the sentiment around this name is remains very, very negative, going concern type things. A um, couple things, Germany passed some laws this week that, that are opening up their markets. Schumer is floating another banking reform bill on, on the... Uh, on the floor that's got bipartisan support all the chatter is that it eventually happens the only question is only question is when uh, if trump wins the election and it doesn't happen before that you know less likely under a conservative rule that it gets pushed forward but um that that is what it is when you look at is this a trend break or is this a fake breakout like we saw here, here, and here, and that kind of thing. And again, I think a bottom's forming here, but you know, it's uh, it, it's going to be a challenge for this to see. Um, you know, until that banking uh, legislation is actually put through in the U.S., sustainable rallies are a challenge. But from a value play, there's a lot of um, opportunity here and the german markets opening up apparently is is very very positive 
for a couple of the Canadian players. Uh, so it is a name we are long in the portfolio right now. Let's uh, let's have a look at another name here. Okay, looking at the bond market, we got a little bit of a bounce off the uh, Powell presser, uh, bonds, long bonds, and and the Fed's seemingly uh, dovish comments, um, less worried about inflation pressures. Initially, the the bond market sold off a bit, caught a bit of a bid. Um, again, monumental supply in front of us. There's no way bonds rally here. Now, in a hard landing scenario, you're you're going to get that duration demand uh, as money rotates out of equities, but we're not close to that yet. Um, it's it's quarters away, I guess, is is, is my expectation. Uh, I think supply in the next couple of quarters still dwarf this. So we should see the TLT ultimately come back below 90 and somewhere below 90. I think you want to load up on duration again, but we're not there yet. We've definitely come off the exuberant peaks where long term uh, rates pierced 4%. So you can see the yield on an inverted basis here in the purple. So back late December, we saw that move through four. We hated it. We were uh, fully hedging our interest rate risk here. We, we again here, we unhedged a little bit here. We've been trading it pretty actively. Um, somewhere below 90, we're gonna, we're gonna get long duration again. And we're not, we're, again, we're not there yet. We're mostly hedged on our fixed income. The real anomaly here to me is what's happened with gold and the lack of performance in, in gold equities. Uh, I think it's one of the cheapest uh, asset classes in Canada. I actually sent an email to some gold analysts um, today on Friday uh, seeking kind of some commentary around, you know, why they think we're, we're just not seeing the gold names and, and the PM names in general uh, respond to this move higher. Uh, I ultimately think gold is going to keep grinding higher um inflation risks to me are real um overall market risks are, are pretty high but i guess gold analysts just don't believe these prices are sustainable i i don't know i can't i can't make heads or tail of it maybe it's just money that you know otherwise would would have gone into the real metal here is is going into bitcoin and and the like and and maybe that's you know that's a big factor Hard to say. And finally, the last chart of, of the week here is the Canadian dollar. And when we look at the range of the last few months between 135, 136, we, we've tried to break 136 out to the upside a few times. It's been rejected. Um, we closed above it on a weekly basis for the first time this year. That implies to me that 138, 139 is now open again and that we should see that in the next quarter uh, or two, a test in, in that range. And at that point, we'll, we'll determine um, you know, our positioning, but, but it looks like the top side is, is open here um, for the Canadian dollar to weaken a little bit. Anyways, that's all we have this week. That's all we've learned. Markets are, are confusing to me on, on, the, uh, on the strength and the multiple expansion we're seeing on what to me, um, is is not fundamentally justified. <laughs>